In this Minecraft challenge, I am stuck within an expanding border. This expanding border starts off as only one chunk, and no matter what I do, I cannot break out of it. However, as each day goes on, the border will expand bigger and bigger. As the border expands, I'll be able to expand my base as well. I will be doing this entire challenge in virtual reality, as well as being in a hardcore world. To make things even harder, this expanding border will be present in both the nether and within the end. Let's see if I have what it takes to defeat the ender dragon in 100 days. So it looks like this is the one chunk we have to start off with and we didn't get much. We do have a pig though. And as you guys can see, I can break anything inside of the expanding border, but anything on the outside I cannot touch. Well, Mr. Pig, I guess it's just you and me for now. I'll be honest, it did make me feel a little good knowing I had at least one friend in here with me. Now that I've gotten a little bit familiar with my jail cell, I decided it was time to get some tools. And to do that, I would need some wood. But to get some wood, I'll have to cut down a tree, and by that, I mean punch it to death until it falls down. <sighs> I just need a minute, guys. <sighs> just one minute. After I got enough wood, I was able to make my first crafting table. I then made a wooden pickaxe and got to work mining some cobblestone. I made my first set of stone tools and it really felt like I was starting to get somewhere in this challenge. Also, I found this cool little water cave while I was mining. I went back to the surface and saw that another one of my ex-girlfriends spawned in. What the heck are you doing here? And then I found this bee flying around and he had a lot of poop on his butt. I think I'm gonna call this guy Mr. Poopy. It was getting dark out and I realized I would need some source of food. The only issue is I had no source. But I did have one idea. Grass gives seeds. And then I could use that seed to make wheat and that wheat to make bread. And now I've got food, as easy as that. So, maybe I'll get lucky and get a seed. Come on game, give me a seed. I just want one seed. <sighs> and of course, I broke all the grass around this little area and there was no seed dropped. That really is just my luck. But to my surprise, I wasn't completely out of luck because I happened to stumble upon an apple. I'll probably hold on to this until I'm really desperate. And not to spoil anything for you guys, but I do in fact become that desperate. But can you guys really be surprised? I mean, look at this. I've got one chunk and hardly any resources. And before I knew it, my little chunk finally expanded by one block. I know one block doesn't sound like a lot, but it does add up. And just imagine how huge this place is going to be after 100 days. I spent the rest of night one clearing out some grass. On the morning of day two, I had a nice amount of saplings, so I placed them all around the border. This should give me a pretty good amount of wood to start with. I decided I would head back down to my mine to get some more cobblestone, and then I found my first group of iron. Oh, hell yeah guys. It's only day two and I already found some iron. I continued my mining, and while doing so, the border expanded once again. I thought this was a bit odd because it was daytime, so it made me realize that the border expands during the day and during the night. And you know, initially, I thought this would be a good thing, because if I had more room, that means I'd have more resources. But then I realized, that also means there's more mobs that would spawn. That's gonna make this challenge a whole lot more difficult than I thought. Oh, and let me tell you, there are a lot of mobs that end up spawning. After a few minutes of mining, I came across some coal. And for obvious reason, coal is pretty important because now I'll be able to smelt my iron and make torches to keep mobs from spawning. And luckily, there was a lot of it. I ended up finding more iron and I found a lava pit. This will be great for when I finally decide to go to the nether. Hmm, that makes me wonder if the nether is going to have its own expanding border. What do you guys think? Later that night, I placed torches around the border to keep any mobs from spawning. On the other hand, maybe I should let some mobs spawn. I just sit in my room playing VR and it's pretty lonely. Maybe a zombie or two will help fill the empty lonely void I feel inside me. I spent the rest of night two smelting all the iron I found. On day three, I had 12 iron ingots and of course the first thing I made was an iron sword. All right, let's go. Day three and I've already got an iron sword. I was getting a little bit hungry after all the hard work I put in the past few days, and luckily I had two apples to help with that. Oh man, this thing tastes great in VR. 
Unfortunately, those were my only two apples and I have not gotten lucky yet with getting any seeds. So unfortunately, I was gonna have to kill my ex-girlfriends. Shelly, I swear this is not personal, although I did hate your mother. I decided to let the other two live for now. Maybe I'll be able to breed them later, but if I do find myself needing food again, they're definitely not off the table. Later that day, I ended up seeing two sheep out in the distance, which would be really nice to have over here because I could get some cotton and make a bed. I guess that's what makes this challenge so hard. Even if I see something out in the distance, I won't be able to just go there and get it. I'm gonna have to wait until my border gets big enough. Speaking of which, right after that, I caught my border expanding once again. I'm really beginning to think that the border just expands at random times whenever it wants to. I broke some more grass, and finally I got a seed. Oh my gosh, you guys, finally we can make a farm. Let's go. Maybe I won't have to kill off my other two ex-girlfriends. Luckily, I already had some water exposed, so it was easy enough to make a farm. Oh yeah, guys, soon we're gonna have food for days. I had a pretty good amount of wood at this point, so I spent the rest of day three building my starter house. By the morning of day four, I had my house finished. And I think it turned out really nice. It was a little small, but it was definitely cozy. I could even watch the sunrise from the back window. It even looks good from the outside too. It is a little small, but I don't really have a lot of room to work with anyway, so I think it's pretty perfect. But I want to hear from you guys. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate this house? After building my house, I was a bit low on wood, so I immediately got to work chopping down some trees. Later that evening, it started pouring rain on me, so I spent the rest of my night inside staying warm. At least in here, I'll stay nice and dry. I woke up on day five and there were some flaming bats outside. What the heck are those? All right, please don't set my house on fire. Once again, those sheep were out in the distance, but I wasn't even close to being able to reach them. But then it turned out that sheep actually spawned inside of my border. And not one, but two sheep spawned inside. Oh, nice. Now I won't have to worry about waking up to any more flaming bats. I collected their wool and made myself my very first bed. Now my house is finally complete. For the next couple days, I decided I would go mining. I made a mine shaft right inside my house just for easy access. I ended up being down here for a pretty long time, so I'm just going to speed this part up. I thought things were going nice and smooth, but I was not ready for what happened next. <sighs> oh my god, that was so close. Alright, well, let me try to kill these mobs without getting myself killed. I ate my last piece of meat, but luckily I think I cleared out all of the mobs. Unfortunately, the world border was preventing me from going any further, but I'm really curious to see what I'll find once the border expands. I did some more exploring and I found this really cool dark cave going deeper into the ground, but of course it had a ton of mobs in it. My theory for why there's always so many mobs grouped together is because I think they can only spawn inside of the world border, and since my border is pretty small right now, there's not a whole lot of areas they can spawn in. But I also found something really weird down in the cave. A subscribe button? What the heck? I didn't know they had those in Minecraft. We're only 10,000 subscribers away from hitting half a million, so if you want to support the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button but you guys already know your boy ain't no chicken so i spent the rest of day seven mining i finally made it back to my cozy house and it turns out i mined quite a bit i mined about four stacks of cobblestone 21 iron and a stack and a half of coal I know that's not a crazy amount, but I was only in there for two days, so I think that's pretty good. I, uh, kind of ran into one big issue, though. I forgot to place torches around my house for the past few days, and there are a lot of mobs that spawned outside. Okay, that is a lot of mobs. Oh, and he's chasing me. Oh! Oh, he actually hurts a lot. Oh my god. No, don't kill me. Get away from me, you little grunt. I did end up killing the little guy, but then I almost got killed by a skeleton. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh my gosh, I have two hearts left. That was way too close. I decided to play it safe and board up my windows for the rest of the night. I 
I woke up on day eight and I still had two hearts. The only problem is I had no food, so I had no choice, but I was gonna have to kill all the animals around my house. Once I was nice and full, I decided to put my iron to use and make myself a full set of iron armor. This will give me so much more protection and hopefully make surviving in hardcore a lot easier. Yeah, check me out guys, I'm full iron meta mic. I spent the rest of the day chopping down trees and tending to my farm. It's now day 9 and I thought it would be fun to explore the area around my border. I know it's expanded a few times since I last explored, so I'd be interested to see what I would find. I ended up finding some pink flowers and red flowers, but there wasn't really anything else interesting besides that. I spent the rest of the day making a bunch of tools and organizing all of my chests. This is something I actually hate doing, but it makes everything look so much nicer. Not a whole lot happened on day 10. I placed a new layer of torches around the border, I found some more coal to mine, and later that night I ended up finding some new flowers. By day 11, I realized my border was getting very close to the ocean and this made me realize how big my border has grown since we first started this series. I also noticed a really cool island out in the distance which I decided I would call Skull Island. Now I don't actually think we'll get there during this 100 day challenge, but maybe if I continue the series we'll get there by like, I don't know, day 500. Later I realized that fish were spawning in the river behind my house, so I took this opportunity for some free food. On day 12 I saw Mr. Poopy flying around and I thought why not try to capture him. I lured him into my house using a red rose, and I was thinking how easy that was until he just flew right out my window. I know I say this in almost every video, but I think I really am stupid. I went down to the beach and finally the border had expanded past the sand so now I'll be able to make some glass for my windows. I think it added a really nice touch to my house, but more importantly it allowed Mr. Poopy to no longer escape. Mr. Poopy was so happy that he even started breakdancing in the corner, what the heck? Do you guys know why every bee I run into starts breakdancing? It's really odd. On day 13, I made a new tree farm and then I also decided to do some exploring around my border. I stumbled across this cave with a creeper guarding it, so of course I had to yeet him into oblivion. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of the border, I couldn't actually explore the cave, but I did find some iron. After doing some exploring, I came back to my house and I accidentally let Mr. Poopy out. For some reason, he got really pissed at me and started chasing me around. Oh, oh my god, he's so angry. He wants to bite me. Ow, what the heck was that for? Wait a second, am I gonna die from this? Mr. Poopy, I swear to god, if you end my challenge here, I will be so pissed. Ooh, okay, good. I really thought I was about to die. I went to get some fish from the river behind my base, and there were so many fish that had spawned. What is going on, guys? There's like a hundred fish in here. Have you guys ever seen so many fish in one area before? Because I definitely haven't. I'm guessing this has to do with how weird the spawns are because of the world border, but at least I won't have to worry about going hungry anytime soon. I'll be honest, I don't know if I like how easy it is to get food now, it just seems a little bit too easy, so of course I decide to make it hard on myself like I always do and make a fishing pole. The only problem is I only had one string. So on day 14 I decided to head down into the mines and look for a spider. I entered the mine shaft and was immediately greeted by some mobs. But just behind them was a web, and that's the web I needed to make my string. I got down to 2 health and there were still more mobs coming at me. <sighs> come on, come on, come on. I don't know how I got backed into the corner but that was a close one. After having those two very close calls of almost dying, I decided to head back to my house and call it a night. Fortunately, I was able to make a fishing pole thanks to that nice zombie that brought me some string. I spent day 15 and 16 fishing, I threw the lure in and then I waited, and waited, and waited. But finally I caught something and it went flying over my head. Alright, I have no idea what that was, but whatever it was just went flying like a hundred feet behind me. I ran up to it and it turns out it was a lily pad. 
Funny enough though, because I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be catching fish. Maybe I'm just a really bad fisherman, but it did look really nice in the river. I planted a carrot that I got in the mines from yesterday, and then I went back to fishing. And after a little bit of waiting, I finally caught my first fish. <gasps> Fishy! This thing looks like it's gonna taste great. I know I could just get fish by killing them with my sword, but that really wasn't satisfying, and at least this way it actually feels like I'm doing something. And you guessed it, I spent the rest of that day fishing. After two straight boring days of fishing, I caught a decent amount of stuff. I had 17 cod, 7 salmon, and I even found Nemo. I think he's dead though. Nothing really happened on day 17, but I did get to see a spider ascending into the heavens. On day 18 and 19, I realized the area around my base was getting super cluttered with trees again from the world expanding, so I decided to clean up a little bit. I also ended up running into another ex-girlfriend, which is really great because soon I'll have carrots and then I'll be able to breed them. I did other chores as well, like tending to my farm. Day 20 was pretty anticlimactic. I didn't really do much, it just, uh, yeah, I just broke a bunch of grass all day. On the morning of day 21, I finally finished the terraforming, and then I decided to place torches around the border. At some point, I'll probably stop placing torches around the border, that way I can get some more animals to spawn. As much as I enjoy fish, I definitely would love to try some steak. I may have overdone it a little bit with the torches, I placed a lot. And I mean a lot of torches. During the next couple days, I decided I would make an actual farm. The temporary farm I made down at the river is already getting pretty full with wheat, so I want to make a nice big farm right in front of my base. Soon I'll be breeding animals, so I was going to have to do this sooner or later. And just like that, I had a pretty nice farm set up. I planted my carrots, but I only had two. Luckily I had bone meal though, so I was able to make a lot more. And by the end of that night, I had an entire plot of carrots and wheat. The next day I expanded the farm because I knew I was going to run out of room eventually. And then I also placed these nice looking torches above the farm to prevent any mobs from spawning. I didn't want them eating any of my food. And here's the final product of my farm. I'm personally very happy with it, but let me know what you guys would rate this on a scale of 1 to 10. Later that night, I decided to explore the ocean, but there wasn't a whole lot to see. The world border blocked off most of the ocean, so I only had access to a little bit, but at least I got to see some really cool fish. On day 24, I wanted to try something a little bit different. I got two axes, and since I'm in VR, I can actually dual wield both of them and go ham on some trees. Alright, be honest and let me know in the comments below. What's better, VR Minecraft or normal Minecraft? Even if you've never played VR Minecraft, just let me know what looks more fun. Later I did some exploring and I came across this chicken right outside my border. Here chicken chicken chicken. Come here boy. Here chicken 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 chicken. Or, or girl, I'm actually, I'm really not sure. Are chickens boys or girls? That night I decided to place some more torches around the border, and I just so happened to run into those chickens again. But this time they were a lot closer, so I was able to get them to follow me. Alright, I want you two to make me a beautiful baby. Oh, look at that little guy, or girl. Like I said, I really don't know. How are you supposed to know? I also ended up finding another sheep. On day 25, I decided it was time to finally enter the nether. I'm definitely a bit nervous because this is on hardcore and if I die, that is the end of my challenge. This is where things are about to get pretty exciting. <sighs> All right guys, let's do this. Thanks to the border, I have nowhere else to go except down. All right, we've got some nether quart here. I'm not really sure what to use this for, but I'll go ahead and get some. Oh, wait a second, I think we have an opening here. All right, we've got a nice little blue biome over here. Oh, we got a blue mushroom. I actually like these a lot because I hate those nether pigs. Well, until my border gets bigger, there's not really much else I can explore here. I headed back to my nether portal and decided I would mine on the other side to see what else I could find. I like staying next to the expanding border when I'm mining, that way I know when it expands. 
And shortly into mining on the other side, to my surprise, I found another fortress. Nice. Well, that was easy. Gotta be nice and careful. I don't want any baddies to kill me. All right. Well, we already found another fortress, but there's not really much I can do down here yet. I thought finding one of these was going to be the harder part of this challenge, but I guess I was wrong. Since there wasn't anything to do on this end, I tried mining on the other side hoping I would find a blaze spawner. But after a bunch of mining, I sadly found nothing. So after two days of hanging out in the nether, I decided to pack it up and head on home. On day 28, I was finally out of the nether and I decided to explore this cave in front of my house. This cave's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. I followed it all the way to the end and all it did was loop around to another side of my base. Huh, interesting. Alright, well, I guess there's not much to see here. Later that night, I found some more chickens just outside the border. I spent day 29 upgrading my farm. Wow, that is one beautiful farm right there, I tell you what. On day 30, I decided to go fishing, but that was until I started getting raided. Whoa, wait, what the heck is going on over there? Um, excuse me, hello, um, sorry, but this is kind of my land. Oh, I see you guys are definitely not the brightest. Funny enough, they were actually stuck outside the border, which made killing them very easy. Alright, let's just put this right up here and hopefully that will deter future raiders. You know, it gives a nice little touch. Maybe I'll get a whole collection. Ah, now I can get back to fishing and enjoying the view. I also decided to try fishing in the ocean, hoping it would give me other types of fish. But it looks like the same kind. I even got another Nemo. It's now day 31 and I found two pigs and my border expanded once again. I brought them over to my animal pen and this is where all hell broke loose. Almost all of my chickens escaped and I spent the rest of the day trying to get everything back into the pen. The next morning, I watched another spider ascend into the skies, and then I made a new pen for all of my animals. Alright, the animal pen is finished, and we have plenty of room to store animals. Now that my border has expanded a decent amount, I decided to spend the next handful of days exploring this mineshaft. And let me tell ya, things get scary. Alright, this is really creepy, and I feel like something is going to fall on my face any second, and I really hope it's not a creeper. Oh, alright, uh, yeah, let's definitely not go this way. Hey, at least we have a bunch of iron over here. Alright, nice and slow. Oh my gosh, that was close. You almost got me, game. Almost. Hey, the border expanded. You know what that means? More mobs. Yay. Speaking of mobs, look at all of those down there. That is crazy. Imagine I fell down there. That would be game over. But don't you worry, boys. I got a nice little surprise for them. And the rules are very simple. You see how many monsters you can kill with one lava bucket. Ooh, that is nice. How many is that, boys? Eight? Well, after five days of exploring the mineshaft, I finally returned to my base. And I made out with quite a bit of profit. Look at this, I've got two and a half stacks of iron. That is crazy. Who knew mining for a few days could be so lucrative? I also got some beetroot seeds and some melon seeds, so I spent day 39 adding them to my farm. While I was finishing the farm, I realized this creep was totally staring at me. One thing I did find out from this encounter is that you cannot shoot an Enderman with a bow. Look at that, he dropped an Ender Pearl. Nice. Later that night, I found both a cow and a sheep outside my border and I brought them inside to my animal pen. Eventually, I want to get this animal pen nice and full. Let's go ahead and start by breeding our two sheep. Ah, oh, look at that cute little guy. I cannot wait to eat him. I wanted to go exploring around the new areas where the border expanded, but before I knew it, I was being attacked by these four flying bats. Great, of course this happens when I'm super far away from my base. I may be in trouble here, boys. 
Come on, go, 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 go. Luckily, I did make it home just fine, and the next morning, I got to watch them all burn. Yeah, that's what you guys get. You think you can bully me around? Four on one? How is that even fair? Later that day, I did some more exploring and found these two cows, but unfortunately, they were just out of reach. Nothing else really too exciting happened, but that night, I did breed all of my animals. On day 41, I decided I wanted to make a cobblestone generator, and I always like making mine out of glass, so I got to mining some sand. Once I got enough glass, I put it together, and, uh, yeah, I kind of screwed up. Well, shit. You know, I kind of had a feeling that was going to happen. That's why I was hesitating. I just knew something was off. I don't have a diamond pickaxe, so even if I wanted to remove this, I can't. I decided to build a new one on my roof because it would be a much better view. Alright, easy, easy. Nice, there we go, we got a working cobblestone generator. Alright guys, this is looking real nice. I pretty much have infinite blocks now and I can build anything I want. I wasn't sure what I was going to use the cobblestone on first, but I spent the next three days mining a bunch. Oh no, okay. We've got a big problem guys, I don't know how this happened, but my lava is leaking everywhere. <laughs> No, 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 no! How long is this gonna burn for? Come on! No, 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 no! Oh my god, that was so close. I really thought I was gonna die there. Wow, I am just at a loss of words. I can't believe it. All this hard work, and it's just burning away right in front of us. I managed to salvage what I could. Luckily, it really ended up not doing too much damage, so that made me a little bit happy. I decided the first thing I would build with all my cobblestone was a new house. If you guys have seen my previous videos, then you'll know I'm a big fan of making castles. But before I build the castle, I decided I would move this house to the other side and use it as my farmhouse. So I spent the next two days doing just that. So I'm going to give you guys a tour of the new farmhouse. As you can see, it's pretty identical. I've got everything set up exactly the same. You know what? Let's go ahead and add this too, just for that final detail. Nice. Now it's just like my starter home. Ah, uh, what great memories we made in here. Wow, you guys. Look at how much of the border has expanded already. This is kind of crazy. We started with only one chunk, and now we have all of this room in here. This is pretty amazing. Just imagine how this is going to look by day 100. The next morning, I started bright and early on my castle, and I'll be honest, this is kind of a big build, so it's going to take me a few days to finish. So far the castle's coming along nicely, I finished the framing and now it's time to add all the detail. And nice, this is what the outside of the castle looks like, I think it looks really good and here's the inside for you guys to see. Let me know what you would change about this castle to make it look even better. You know, what better way to break in the new castle than to do some fishing off the top of it? Wow, that actually worked surprisingly. I'll be honest, I didn't actually think this would work. I thought it would like disconnect or something, but I guess you can fish from this far away. That's pretty cool. Come on, give me a big old fish. A lily pad, are you serious? Come on. On day 50, I decided to check around the expanding border just to see if I could find anything new. I wasn't really expecting to find anything, but I ended up finding a lot of animals. Oh look, there's even a sheep way out there. Oh nice, look at that, we got even more animals over on this side. Holy, I'm like an animal whisperer or something, look at all of these. Oh look at that, we even got a pig. I decided to finally head back home, and then I got attacked by those flying bats again. I really should sleep more. But I had a very simple solution to this, and it involved me and a bed. I started off my morning of day 51 by watching the bats burn, and then I gathered all of my new animals together. I brought them across the farm and into my animal pen where I forced them to reproduce so that I could make those also reproduce. Minecraft really is kind of a messed up game if you think about it. But hey, it's not my fault that I have to force all of these innocent animals to reproduce just so that I can survive, right? It's just a survival game. I'm not a bad person, you are. 
Later that day, I decided to plant some sugarcane because eventually I needed bookshelves so that I could enchant. It's probably a little bit early to start thinking about enchanting, but hey, better um, early than never, right? I think. Is that how the saying goes? After that, I did a lap around my border hoping to find something useful. And I did actually end up finding a new cave system, so that was pretty exciting. Ooh, what do we have here, guys? Okay, it's kind of spooky in there. I better get some torches. I came back with my torches and ran into this good gentleman. I think he had an anger problem though because he literally blew up on me. I made my way down into the cave and found some iron and coal, but unfortunately I couldn't go too deep because it was blocked by the expanding border. I mined up all the resources in the cave and then I went back out to do some more exploring and later that night I ended up finding another cave system. There is two spiders guarding the entrance of the cave, but they were no match for me. I am the best VR Minecraft player after all. I thought things were going fine until this creepy zombie came out. Whoa, you are scary. I finally made my way into the cave and I was really excited to see what I was going to find and it ended up just being a dead end. Great, all that for literally nothing. I love this game. I spent the rest of night 51 staring out at the ocean beyond my border. I woke up bright and early on day 52 and decided I wanted to do some more exploring. So I jumped off my castle and headed back into the wilderness. And then the super rude skeleton started shooting at me. Can you believe this guy? I ended up stumbling upon this beehive and a couple bees, however I don't have silk touch so I won't be able to mine it yet. I climbed up this tree to get a good vantage point to see if I could find anything else in the distance, but I didn't really see anything that important. I did find this cool looking mountain out in the distance that I decided to call Eyeball Mountain. Maybe one day my border will be big enough for me to get out there. After a long day of exploring, I finally made it back to my base. Nothing else too exciting happened that day, so I decided to call it a night. On day 53, I figured my border was expanded enough to finally start searching the ocean. I saw a lot of cool fish and squid out in the distance, but to be honest, the ocean kind of creeps me out, and in VR, I swear, this is actually really scary. Yet, somehow at the same time, it's really peaceful. I don't know how to explain it, but hopefully you guys know what I mean. Wow, this squid looks just like one of my ex-girlfriends. That's crazy. What a small world we live in. I swam all the way to the border, and I found this really nice glowing area, but it was just out of reach. I was about to head back to my base, but then I found this really cool underwater cave. I swam down to check it out, but I'll be honest, it really creeped me out and I'm not sure if I'm ready to explore this yet. But of course curiosity got the better of me, so I decided to make some doors and head back out to the cave. <sighs> Alright guys, I'm gonna do my best not to drown here. I've got a whole stack of doors, so I should be able to explore a decent amount. I've got two ways I could go, but I think I'm gonna try this left side first. I wasn't finding too much, but then I found this area with a bunch of obsidian and these weird lava blocks. Maybe I can use these to make an elevator in my castle. I also managed to find some redstone. I'm really not good with redstone though, but maybe at some point I'll learn how to make auto farms. The cave systems in Minecraft are really cool to me. I'm not sure how they get generated, but they're literally like a giant maze. On that note, I did get lost down here and it took me a few days to get out. On the plus side, I was finding a lot of useful resources, but I really wanted to find my first diamond. I ended up finding this part of the cave that was open, and it was nice to finally be able to breathe some fresh air. This part of the cave was surprisingly pretty big. I found a couple zombies, and I was hoping I'd find my first diamond down here. I didn't find any diamonds, but I did find an even bigger part of the underwater cave system. And I thought surely this is where I'd find a diamond. If I was a diamond, this is where I'd be hiding. I ended up finding a scary skeleton with enchanted armor, but sadly no diamond. And then a zombie with an enchanted shovel tried attacking me. And then zombie after zombie just kept coming at me. I think I might be next to a spawner, but they were no match for my trusty lava bucket. I ended up finding this big ravine with a mineshaft in it, and then I realized this must be the same cave I was in earlier with the mineshaft in it. It's crazy to me how I found the exact same cave system all the way from the ocean, but like I said, I was down here forever. And then it finally happened. I found my very first diamond. 
I was really excited, but I had to focus because I had multiple mobs coming after me. I got not one, not two, but a total of three diamonds. That's enough to make a diamond pick, and that means I can finally mine obsidian. Ooh, shiny. I started making my diamond pick, and then I had zombies literally raining on me. And again, I cannot stress enough how much scarier Minecraft is in VR. You really feel like you're in this cave and that zombies are right up in your face. I was finally able to make a pickaxe, and I decided I would get some obsidian while I was in here. there we have it we finally have our piece of obsidian i was trying to find my way out but that was a lot easier said than done i got lucky while i was trying to get out of here and i ended up stumbling upon some more diamonds and this was a huge find there were six diamonds in this area so i was really happy and of course i decided to make a diamond sword oh yeah i'm like a real pro gamer now i continued trying to make my way out of here and let's just say i was really on edge for some reason <laughs> I'm on edge. Lift and snuck up on my ass. It's a really good thing I didn't panic. But I had a good reason to be on edge because soon after that I got attacked by a skeleton, three creepers, and a witch. <sighs> Jesus. I ended up getting so lost trying to find my way out that I decided to just continue exploring the mine shafts. And luckily that led to me finding some more diamonds. I ended up making my way back to the water part of the cave and then I finally found where my doors were. And I thought I knew where to go from here but I was still having trouble getting back. Honestly I was so over the caves and the water at this point I really just wanted to get home. While I was looking for the exit I heard this super creepy noise. What the hell is that? Okay, I really want to get out of here. This is not fun anymore. But I finally realized it was just a lightning storm. I'm telling you guys, I'm really on edge right now. VR Minecraft is seriously no joke. And finally, after swimming around forever, I found my way back to the entrance. I cannot even begin to express how happy I am to be back. Oh my god, I'm so happy to see my castle. I don't even care that it's raining right now. <sighs> okay, maybe the lightning's a little too much. I rode my way back to the castle, and next time I come down here, I'm definitely gonna bring some signs. Oh great, and look at that, I've got my best friends greeting me. You guys have fun out there, okay? I'm gonna go to sleep now. Before I go to bed, let's take a quick look at all of the loot we got. We found a ton of redstone, lapis, and we even found 14 diamonds. And because I was gone for so long, I spent the next day organizing my inventory and doing chores around my base. On day 62, I wanted to get Silk Touch so I could finally get that beehive, so I set up an enchanting table and got to enchanting. However, after many, many enchants, I still did not get Silk Touch, and I figured this might be because I'm missing bookshelves. Those are probably pretty important for a reason. Later that night, I decided to make a second diamond sword because, let's be honest, two is better than one. I took off into the wilderness looking for some mobs to test out my dual wielding swords. And it did not take long to find some mobs. But I'll be honest, things go badly very quick. This was a lot more mobs than I expected. I'm guessing as the border gets bigger, the game mode gets harder and harder. I was down to two hearts, so I decided to retreat back to my base just for some extra safety. And then I got rushed by this little guy. What the hell is that thing? <sighs> okay, 
that was a little too close for comfort. The two swords definitely made me a little cocky. I was out there acting like I was Kirito or something. The next morning, I decided to remake my cobblestone generator because I wanted to make a mob grinder and I was going to need a lot of cobblestone. And this time I did not mess up. I spent the next three days straight mining cobblestone. Aside from mining cobblestone during those three days, I bred my animals off cooldown and I worked on my sugarcane farm. After three days of non-stop grinding, I have a crazy amount of animals and I was able to expand my sugarcane farm across the entire beach. Now that I have plenty of cobblestone, it was time to build our mob grinder. By the end of day 68, I was finally done building the mob grinder, and I have to be honest, this is such a nice view from up here. It's funny because as I was checking out the view, our border expanded yet again. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you guys rate my base right now? I think it's looking pretty good as it is, and we still have another 30 days to go. And maybe one day, we'll be able to explore the entire ocean. The next morning, I headed back down to my base to get started on the day. And what better way to start the day than to chop up a bunch of cows? And then I chopped up all my sugar cane because my next goal is to make bookshelves for my enchanting table. I turned it all into paper and then I made my bookshelves. I did have one slight issue though. For some reason my mob grinder wasn't working and I really have no idea why. If I can't get infinite XP, then I'm not really going to be able to do a whole lot of enchanting. But I'm not sure how to fix that because even if I block all of the spawns right now, there's going to be new spawns once the border expands again. I don't know. If you guys have any ideas, let me know because I'm really interested what you guys would do. Regardless, I placed down all my bookshelves and then I checked to see if I could find the Silk Touch enchant. I'm missing some bookshelves, but right now that's all I can afford. Now let's hope we get lucky and find Silk Touch. But of course I wasn't lucky, because when am I ever lucky? This game hates me. On the next morning, I thought my mob spawner was finally working, but all it had was two skeletons in it. I can't believe I did all the work of making this thing just to get no spawns from it. I decided to give up on enchanting for now and head into the nether. It's day 70 and I still don't have any blaze rods, so it's starting to make me a little bit nervous. I wanted to build a new nether portal up in my castle, so I headed back down to the mines to get some more obsidian. When I was trying to find my way out, I kept getting jumped by mob after mob. Including one of my least favorite mobs in this entire game, the poison spiders. I literally hate these things so much. They kind of remind me of my ex-girlfriend. I finally made it out, but because it was raining, I spent the rest of my night inside staying dry. The next day, I put up my new nether portal. Before I headed back into the nether, I took one last moment and joined the view. But then I saw this strange thing out in the water, so I decided to go take a closer look. And let's just say it about made me sh my pants. Whoa, what the heck is this thing? Are you guys seeing this? Do you guys know what this is? What the heck? Is this a horse? What the hell is this? I honestly had no idea that stuff like this can happen in Minecraft, but luckily they were actually pretty stupid. After almost suffering a heart attack IRL, at least I got this really cool horse out of it. On the start of day 73, I decided to head back into the nether, and this is where I spent the next couple of days. It's kind of odd because even though I made a new nether portal, it still took me to the same one inside of the nether. I don't know if that's because they're so close to each other, or if that's just how this mod works. Anyways, I explored the nether fortress hoping to find a blaze spawn. Finally, I found my blaze spawner, but I ran into a little bit of a problem. Um, okay. Well, I wasn't expecting this to happen. At least I can just wait a few days and come back. I think that's why I like this hardcore challenge so much. Every time you want to go try to do something, you realize you're blocked by the expanding wall. So instead, I ended up getting gold and trading with the piglins. I was having a hard time finding gold, so it was a slow process, but I also found some endermen to kill along the way. On day 75, I came back from the nether and put all of my loot away, and then I set up some bookshelves for my enchanting table. 
Uh, do you guys think my books are gonna get soggy from the rain? After that, I made these two elevators for my castle just to get up and down for my second floor. And like the idiot I am, I almost died making the elevator to go down. Wow, that was a close one, guys. Yeah, I, uh, I think we should end the day there. You know, that was just way too stressful and way too close. I spent the next few days collecting glass and creating these kill chambers for my animals. I know, I know, very humane, right? Even though it's very annoying to get all of the animals in it, I will say it's very nice once they're all set up. And just like that, we have an infinite source of meat and leather. Shh, 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 shh. don't worry, this is good for you. Shh, shh, shh. just relax, enjoy it. And finally, all of my torture cha- I, uh, I mean animal farms were finished. And sadly, my mob grinder still was not working. It's been a few days since I last checked the nether, so I decided to head back and see if I had access to the blaze spawn. On my way there, I ran into this poor unfortunate blaze and I found my very first blaze rod. You know what? Actually, I don't feel bad. These guys have burned down my island in one block almost twice. Screw these guys. Ooh, thank you sir for the nice gift. I finally made it back to the blaze spawner and it was just barely in range from the expanding border. I spent the next couple of days farming blaze rods and trading with the piglins. By the time I was done farming, I had a decent amount of ender pearls and I had 13 blaze rods. I headed back to my base and I think I made a friend because this guy followed me. Oh, what's going on, buddy? Why are you down in the dumps? Did Sheila break up with you again? All right, here, let me try to help you out of this hole. All right, Fred, I want you to climb into this boat. You're not making this very easy on me, are you? All right, Fred, I drained all the lava. You should be able to get out. Hey, there you go, buddy, you made it. All right, Fred, let me go show you around the base and I'll make you your very own room. Uh, Fred, where'd you go, buddy? <sighs> All right, Freddy, I give up on you. That night, I was able to make my Eyes of Ender. I could head to the end portal now, but first I'd like to enchant all of my gear. Unfortunately, because my mob grinder doesn't work, I'm gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. And unfortunately, doing it this way takes way longer. I still didn't get the silk touch enchant, so I had to go back down to the mines to get some more XP. But after killing endless mobs, finally, on day 85, I got the silk touch enchant. I went back into the wilderness looking for the beehive, and then I brought that and a couple bees back to my base. Once I got back, I set up a nice little home for the bees, and then I bred them for a little baby bee. All right, guys, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Baby bees are probably the cutest creature in Minecraft. Prove me wrong. Comment below what you think is cuter than a baby bee. I finished the bee home by putting a variety of flowers around their beehive, and I think it turned out really nice. And I spent the rest of night 85 watching the bees fly around their new home. On day 86, I did some exploring around my expanding border, and I found this really cool cove area. It would be a really cool idea to set up a hidden base over here that exits out into the ocean, but maybe I'll do that on another day. I did some more exploring and then I noticed my mob grinder in the background and I can't believe how big the border has expanded. It is way over there. After doing some more exploring I came across these two dogs and they ended up becoming my best friend. You guys went from being homeless out in the wilderness to now getting to live in this huge castle. You guys are gonna be spoiled. On day 87 I decided I would start prepping for the ender dragon. I killed my cows for a bunch of meat and then I enchanted all of my gear. Oh yeah, now I'm super OP. Look at this glow, guys. I think I'm definitely ready now to go hunt down the Ender Dragon. And we can even dual wield with a crossbow. How sick is that? This is why VR Minecraft is so much better. And I spent the rest of that night setting up and organizing my gear. On the morning of day 88, I decided to head out and finally start looking for the Ender Dragon. There it is guys, I finally found it. Now we just gotta fight our way to that ender portal.
Wow, I'm down to one heart. It's like these mobs don't stop coming. This is crazy. That was way too close. While I was fighting my way through the dungeon, I came across these two creepers in jail. I guess they must have been pretty naughty to end up in there. I continued fighting my way through the endless amount of mobs in this dungeon, and I stumbled across a library. But because I'm a rebel and I hate reading, I chopped down all of the bookshelves. I hope the librarian here doesn't get mad at me. While I was trying to find the end portal, I came across a diamond and of course some more mobs. I'll be honest though, this area I found looks really cool, especially with the expanding border in the background. And it even led to this really cool looking underwater ravine. But after a bit more exploring and a few more mobs, I finally found the end portal. All right, let's just destroy this and let's place our eyes of vendor. And boom, we are safely and securely at the end portal. I'll see you guys on the other side. I actually got a pretty good spawn and now it's time to kill the dragon. Hey Mrs. Ender Dragon, it's nice to see you again. I know you don't want me here, but I gotta do it for my YouTube video. And just like that, another hardcore inner dragon defeated, and I still have 10 days left to explore the end. Or so I thought. I collected my XP, and then I threw an ender pearl into the teleport, and yeah, I kinda died. Um, I guess VR does not mix well with this mod. Well guys, I guess we failed this challenge because of a glitch, but I'm not gonna count that because that was some BS. If you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe to join me in the metaverse and see more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next one.